There's the same question uh, that comes up with every committee meeting or, or organizers committee meeting, um, who are we playing to? And I think, uh, who was it, somebody was saying before, I think, Julia, you were saying, um, uh, you've got to know who your audience is. And it's important in, in publicity yeah. to know who your <coughs> audience is. Um, invariably, I think invariably, uh, we end up saying, actually, do you know what, it doesn't matter if we're playing to Christians or non-Christians, everyone will hear it afresh every time you pick up the Bible. If you're reading it, you're going to discover it anew each time. Um, That's not quite my question, actually. I'm sorry. It's a kind of philosophical thrust. Yeah, this, this is what I'm leading to. That it, right. then, you then realize, OK, if I'm going to be telling this story to an audience, um, what do I edit out and what do I leave in? This is where we're getting closer to what you're saying. I'll use Brighton again as an example. Um, the first time we performed in Brighton, long, long story, but we ended up um, starting the story at the moment when the disciples fail to heal the uh, possessed boy. Because I wanted an opportunity to meet our audience at the level that a lot of them were at, which were, would be in the same way that the people who witnessed the disciples <coughs> fail would have felt. You're a bunch of charlatans, get out. So if we start the play with that, we're saying to Brighton, we know what you mean, we know what you think. You know, we're talking directly to you. Our, our cast of 30 crowd are going to be screaming and shouting at these two disciples who have screwed up, they've failed to, to heal this man. And so the play could end there. But then Christ arrives and the story builds. So that was a, a very definite choice. Otherwise, um, I try not to second guess too much about the audience. It would have been very easy in Cape Town to think, oh, I've got to do some wonderful sort of interpretation of scripture that helps to address racial uh, uh, divide. But in the end, we all agreed, no, just deliver the story. Leicester, um, I took over Leicester. They'd been going for two years. And I, when I joined, they were quite an aggressive production. Leicester, um, a lot of the cast had witnessed their churches of their childhood closing down and becoming mosques or, or places of other worship. And there were f some furious people in the, in the cast. And it had become a loveless production. It was a, a war cry most of the time. Um, that final speech of, um, of uh, and now I can't remember it, um, the, uh, the Great Commission, uh, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was a war cry. I was wondering where, where the banners were and the spears and everything. It felt like we're going to march the streets and we're going to take over. That was what was in their hearts. But it was extraordinary that that, that fury still existed after Christ had uh, gone through his passion. And it just didn't make sense. So there was, it took about two or three years for that play to change its thrust. And it became a much more um, trusting production. In the rehearsals, a lot of people had to put a lot of uh, fury aside and trust that the, the Holy Spirit would work. And now it, it became a very all-inclusive production that everyone could be proud of and actually feel, coming back to the portrayal of Christ, that they were portraying Christ and not their fury of what was happening in Leicester.